sometimes it's like really hard for me because I feel so bad for feeling this way because I felt like I betrayed everyone. I put on this facade that said like I had so much fun in architecture and like this is all that I've achieved and you can do it too. Hi everyone, before we jump into this video, I just wanted to preface and say that this video was filmed way back in January, so this is what has been going on actually for a very long time, um, and I still wanted to show the kind of steps that happened. That's why I'm releasing it now, and then I want to release the following videos like afterwards and see how it goes, but yeah, this has been my journey. I wanted to make this Chen Diaries, um, just to kind of show my goals in life and where I want to be, and yeah. When I was young, I always had this mindset of wanting to make something for myself and do something great and positive for the world. This is just a diary series I want to record and document the journey of me achieving this seemingly unattainable goal for someone at my social status. Life is really scary and honestly posting these type of videos are really cringe when I know people around me are gonna watch these and I'm kind of defined by the content I put out. But I feel like it is something that especially also with a lot of the people who watch my videos know me as a different identity or personality and it was hard for me also to kind of come out and say this piece and just say that this is something I want to change in my life and make this shift and jump and maybe a leap of faith. But I do think this is what I need to do to hold myself accountable and share the journey and also just push myself out of my comfort zone more. Now my baseline is the more uncomfortable it is, the more I have to do it. There is a quote that says, I am wealthy the day that I decide I am. I feel like a lot of successful people start sharing and giving value when they are successful, which is nothing wrong with that because I don't think I'm at a position to give out a lot of value to this world yet because I have not achieved a certain level of skills or value that I can provide back to the people. But I also want to share this journey when I'm still a nobody or quote unquote a failure before I become that successful and wealthy person. And wealth is not just in the financial sense, but also in the health and mindset type of wealth. So the story is that after graduating, I started looking for jobs because that's what you're supposed to do. And again, there's a video right here where I talked about my job searching journey. So feel free to check that out because that was also quite an emotional roller coaster. So after a tough time of September with over 100 applications and tons of rejections, I finally landed a job in an architecture firm, which I was really happy with, with the reputation and scale and the things I'm going to be doing. So I was so grateful for that opportunity. And honestly, to this day, I still am. And and I still feel in depth to that job and that opportunity that I received. So actually in less than about two months time, I already knew that this job wasn't for me. I already knew that I was gonna quit my job. So some people would say that I haven't given this enough thought or time for me to actually know what the position actually means. And who knows, maybe I'll end up liking it more. But my intuition is so strong to the point that I know that I won't like it. Like it's like an inherent feeling like coming straight from the deepest part of my heart that's telling me that like this is not for me. And again, I want to reiterate that there's absolutely nothing wrong with the company because honestly, all they've done is just be nice to me and provide opportunities for me. And I think re what really changed that is more of a mindset shift on my part. To be honest, if I were to work in any other architecture firm or like any other setting, honestly, the outcome probably would have been the same thing. Maybe in any other nine to five job, maybe that would have been the same outcome. So with that background context, here are some of the reasons that I am going to leave my job. Number one, I feel like I just didn't care about the projects enough. And I feel like I didn't really care about architecture enough as well. When people discuss architecture, I felt like I just didn't care about it like I did in school. I don't know if it's because at school when I did my own projects, I was able to add my own creativity and flair to it. And there was a personality involved in it. But it was just different when I was working uh, compared to at school. Number two, I didn't feel like I was learning the valuable skills I wanted to learn in this position. I always knew that someday I, I really wanted to have my own business. I don't know what it will be, but I always knew that in my heart that I I wanted to do this. But honestly, in this position, I really wasn't learning any of the skills I needed to start a business. So honestly, I started looking at my position as a way of learning the corporate hierarchy and how people interacted with each other and how my supervisors would manage me and how people like was in communication, how teams worked. I had to look at it from that way instead of a more technical position where I was learning softwares. Number three, lack of flexibility. 
So back at school, I wrote a list for everything I had to do for the day, for every day and every week. If I finished what I was supposed to do that day, then I would potentially leave the studio early. Or if not, then I'll just start earlier during the day. But in the workplace, you're supposed to come at 9 and leave at 6 p.m. And it doesn't matter if you finish a task at 5 p.m. because you will stay until 6 p.m. because you are selling your time, you're trading your time for money. So you have to stay in the hours that you said you were going to do. So it's not results driven or it's not like how much work you put into it, but it's really the time that you've invested into this role which is really different to how I want to work because back in school I controlled my own time and I it, it was results driven and dependent on how much tasks that I get done for the day so it was a different way of working for me again this is not to say there's anything wrong with the company I just want to outline the fact that maybe my mindset didn't completely align with how the company was being run and stuff that is all there's nothing wrong Number four, I felt like I was working for a faceless corporation. Now that seems like something I cannot say. Um, anyways, I, I feel like none of the stuff that I was working for like really mattered to me. Like true, I was a small potato at this company, right? And I can't handle any larger tasks and I, I fully recognize that. But I just felt like I wasn't really working for myself in a way. And like I was just selling my time, which is like a true hard cold fact, right? Like I am. I didn't like that, I guess. Number five, I didn't feel as welcomed. So honestly, I felt like this is actually partially my fault. I don't want to like badmouth the company or anything because actually I take responsibility for this one i think this is my fault so actually number five should be i didn't put in as much effort maybe that should be the title i felt like this is partly my fault because i didn't put as much effort into connecting with other people although i did find it a, a bit difficult because everyone there was like significantly older than me you know they some of them had families they had kids like their kids are more similar to me than their parents so <laughs> i found that really weird uh which is fine i think that happens in every workplace so there's nothing wrong with that i just i think i just found it a little bit weird in the beginning and i was like i'm still a kid and these people like have families and everything so yeah people are older than me by like 10 or 30 years or like 40 to 50 years depending on their level and i just felt like i'm just some kid wasting their time by talking to them which obviously that shouldn't be the mindset right but that was how i felt number six i was replaceable so uh, there is always this mindset that i feel like any other person can take over my job like it's not because i was glory that this job was given to me like it didn't really matter who was in my seat like as long as anyone can execute the task then they can just replace me you know i just wanted to be somewhere where i'm there because i am glory i think this is why i enjoy doing youtube so much because it is really about like who i am as a person so sometimes i don't know if this is too much to ask for maybe i'm just really greedy and i want to ask for all these things but it just doesn't make me feel good you know Number seven, uh, there was no human connection or the nature of the job. So every day I would come into the office and face my screen for eight hours straight. Like what I did every day was uh, really repetitive on the certain softwares, but I guess this is what happens for each part one to come out and do. I feel like for me, I just really need some type of human communication and connection. And I feel like I just don't really feel like I'm making much of a difference by just staring at a screen all day. Like sure, I'm definitely contributing to something, but I just always like feeling that direct sense of impact, like especially on my channel in the past where I felt like I made architecture videos that really helped people like get into the school of their dreams and that had a really positive impact to me like I actually felt like I was helping people but then I guess I, I just didn't feel that like when I was working I guess number eight my future uh, when I looked down at the architecture path, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting really emotional. When I looked down at the architecture path, like I saw myself continuing for the rest of the seven years and just working up this corporate ladder that I didn't really want to climb because of the duration. And also I'm probably going to get hate or this is controversial, but to me, it just seems somehow too straightforward and too easy. Like all I have to do is just spend seven years of my life and get a license. And that's not to say that people who do this is wrong. I guess the whole point of this video is if this is just how i think and that should not determine what your path is it, and if you're someone that's gonna pursue architecture and become a licensed architect i fully support that and i think that's really great you know like we need good architects on this planet and don't let me tell you that that's wrong because everyone has their own path laid out for them and this is just something that i felt so strongly when i entered the workplace and that's not to say that i'm correct or i'm wrong we're all figuring out like what works for each of us so i know that i'll offend people 
for saying that, you know, it might seem too easy because to some people it might be really difficult. But to me, this is how I feel. Like I can see myself getting into masters, getting like um, a distinction or like a first class and then graduating and then get into part two and then like keep going and it's continuing down the path and getting, becoming a licensed architect and then just climbing the corporate ladder. And 30 years later, I'm at the top seat. And that is basically my life mapped out like 30 years down the line. Like I know myself and I feel like I can't achieve that. But to me, there is like no adventure and there's no surprises down this path. So for, for me, like, I don't really want that path. Um, I know this is gonna get backlash because I know how many people who watch my channel like love architecture and they're like, Glory, like you're someone that really inspired me to get into architecture. And sometimes it's like really hard for me because like I feel so bad for feeling this way because I felt like it's almost like I betrayed everyone. Like I put on this facade that said like, I had so much fun in architecture and like this is all that I've achieved and you can do it too. And I still believe in that, you know, like I still believe that architecture school is really amazing because I learned so many things there. I had, I met such amazing people and amazing tutors, but I think just leaving um, uni, like I kind of realized like what I wanted more from life and what it really meant. And I really changed my mind. Um, sure, like lots of people change their minds after they graduate anyways, but I just feel like I owed an explanation to the people who looked up to me and said that I inspired them. So this is how I feel. So please don't get me wrong. I actually think if I was a completely different person, my job would be the perfect job. I would have had the perfect education, great pay for someone who just recently graduated, such great benefits and such great location in central London. So like, why would I just throw it all away? But that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw that all away for a potential dream, a potential pursuit of a dream that might or might not come true. But today I'm going to say that it will come true. It's a dream of me, I guess, working on something myself, reaching financial freedom and options, having a life path that is fun and adventurous and building something, a job that works because I am glory. So thinking ahead, I decided if I was to leave architecture, where would I go? So I thought of starting a business, but I still need to learn the skills because I don't know anything. I didn't take a business degree. But after reading tons of books, watching tons of YouTube videos on the topic, podcasts, I have to thank Robert Kiyosaki, Ali Abdallah, Graham Stephan, Alex and Layla Hormozy. I decided that I want to learn the skill of sales. During this time, I also learned a lot about personal finance and investing. At that point, I decided to enter the realm of like real estate. So I needed to step out of my comfort zone and meet with people. There's more coming up with my journey, um, so stay tuned. So many people, and I know a lot of people who are close to me, and even family, will think I am completely crazy for throwing all this career stuff away for such a high-risk career that I don't even know if it's gonna work. Because a lot of these potential jobs I'm looking for, there is no basic salary, it's only commission-based. But honestly, when is the best time to take a risk? Either ages ago or now. When I'm young and you know, I have no family, I have no mortgage, no marriage. And honestly, even if you have all of these things in your life, now is still a better time than tomorrow. Therefore, I decided to take the leap and decided to apply for places. And I decided to make a decision between two real estate brokerage firms. In the end, I decided to choose an international one and I am due to start their academy in February. Also, there's gonna be more videos following up. So you can guess if I actually took the next step or not. So stay tuned. So stay tuned for the next episode of Diaries and see how my journey goes. And then the next one will be more vloggy. Lots more content to come. I guess this video is kind of like a statement of what has happened in my life. And also, I guess, sort of an apology to people who expected something of me and from my content in the future. And I hope that this is more of an explanation of what has been going on in my life because it was a really, really like difficult time for me um, during this time because I felt like I had everything and I could tell people I had all of this, my job, my education, like it was, you know, glamorous. And then I could tell people and then how do I tell people that I'm throwing all of that away? But I don't want to live like a lie on YouTube um, for who I am. So I'm laying out all my cards and this is how I've been feeling. So, you know, if you are someone that has been following my channel since the beginning and this news has disappointed you, I am really sorry. You know, feel free to not stay here. Like, feel free to just 
you know, step away. You don't have to, like, I won't force you to stay. I mean, I cannot force you to stay, obviously. But thank you, you know, for all the time that you watch my videos. I really, really appreciated it. And I'm so glad if I'm able to help you in any single way. And if you are interested in how this journey plays out in the future with my life, I will be documenting stuff and also moving content away from just more self-improvement, life, and, you know, maybe finance, relationships, wealth, um, healthy living, and things like that and if that is something you're interested in then please stick along because honestly for the longest time that has always been something i'm interested in if you made it this part of the video thank you so much it means so much to me that you stayed up to this point and um yeah so in the meantime stay glorious